Hello and welcome once more to the RBG show, where we revisit IFPS that the story has been written by Steven Spielberg himself. I know it is hard to go back to the PlayStation 1 and revisit the games people say are must-buy games. The PlayStation 1 was a turning point for the game industry, going from 2D to 3D, resulting that the games didn't perform well in 3D space, and we were also presented with some wheel controls and camera angles. And it is hard special to go back if you don't have nostalgia for the system. But what I wanted with this review is to show you what made this game great, and maybe consider even playing it. The game was developed by DreamWorks Interactive and published by Electronic Arts for the PlayStation in 1999. After selecting the new game, you're greeted with some real movie clips for the Second World War. It gives a dose of realism and it sucks you in the game even more. The player takes the role of a fictional lieutenant, Jimmy Patterson, a former C-47 sky pilot, who was later recruited to the OSS. And your objective is simple, to do everything you can to stop the enemies to win the war. The game takes place near the end of the Second World War. After watching the clips you are given with a text what gives you insight in every mission, so you know your objectives. In the pause menu are also your mission listed, where you can simply see if you met the objective. And if you didn't, you need to simply go back. Levels are mostly corridor based and linear, with a few branch paths. Sometimes the fights were done in open areas. Still, a map would be appreciated, as the late levels such as the levels become a bit difficult to navigate without a map. The missions are very varied. You are tasked with special missions, like sabotaging the railgun, sneaking your way to the master gas production, to sabotaging the secret German plan to develop the atomic bomb. So every level has its own personality and vibe. It is easily seen that Steven was invested in the story planning. My favorite mission is Escape from Volkram, where you infiltrate a German ship and you need to sabotage it. The mission has a cool stealth vibe. You are given a silence gun and to be honest it looks like the hand is sticking off your chest. Nevertheless, you are sneaking your way around the ship and showing your fake ID to get past certain locations to get the mission done. Show me your paper. Also, after every mission you are awarded with a star rating. And if you perform well enough, you are awarded with medals and some cool codes and cheats you can use later in the multiplayer. We need to appreciate what it's done for the modern FPS. It set basically the foundation for Call of Duty and many others. What also worth mentioning is, is the music. It was composed by Michael Giancello. The music was recorded by a full orchestra and that's one of the high points of the game we need to address. The sound effects of every gun are also well represented. In general the effects are good. Like the lighting in the background and the enemies calling for backup. But the shooting is a little bit clunky. The reason is that the game had analog controls, but they use a method where if you bought this game today you will probably burn a copy of the game. In this game with the left stick you can move and rotate and with the right you can look up and down and strafe. Where the modern day shooters with the left stick you move and strafe and with the right you rotate. Still it isn't a bad control scheme for 1999, but you need some practice to get the hang of it. And aiming is done after pressing the R2 button, what slows a bit the flow of the game, because shooting out of your hip isn't very proficient. At the beginning the game isn't hard, but the later enemies have machine guns and if they caught you off guard they can quickly kill you. Or the dudes with the bazookas who can wall shot you if you're not careful enough. But the shooting itself feels good and the impact that you have with the damage is also very pleasing. Your credit is due to give is the dying animations of the soldiers. You can shoot them in the foot to make them jumping around, shooting the helmets off, shooting them off balconies. And my favorite is just blasting them in the head from one feet away with a shotgun to make them do a backflip. 
what I found very impressive, what, what some later shooters down the road didn't have. The AI isn't the brightest at the start, but later they are heavily armed. They're sidestepping, running for cover or even kicking back the grenades. And if you don't show your papers, you know what they're gonna do. The most annoying point is the view distance, because of the bazooka soldiers. They will shoot you across the level but doesn't contribute to the difficulty at all, but it is what it is. But after beating half of the game the difficult spike is easily seen. The weapons are also well represented, from snipers, pistols, machine guns, you name it. At the beginning it is not important what you carry, but later if you caught with the wrong weapon in the wrong time it's simply game over. Medal of Honor doesn't have a checkpoint system, so you need to start off the beginning of the level. It isn't that bad because the game has only 7 levels and the 7 levels are divided in smaller parts. For one level at a normal run can take you up to 10 minutes. I for that time I know the graphics were impressive, but today it's showing some cracks. Like the low poly soldiers, they were also varied. From standard soldiers to Gestapo, Marines, Captains, Snow Soldiers to straight up scientists who defend their labs. But the horrific faces are still bad. The view distance is pretty bad as I mentioned, like shooting with a sniper is pretty lame sometimes because if you zoom in too far you will zoom just into blackness. And the time it takes to zoom is also painful. Good thing the sniper is only used in a few levels at the beginning. Beating the campaign you need around 7 hours, what puts some modern day shooters to shame. If you're really invested in the game and learn the control early on, it can be beaten under 5 hours. Still, Medal of Honor at that time was a good PlayStation FPS game, with an amazing soundtrack, some historical war video clips, and well written story and with some solid shooting me mechanics. What at that time were mostly things for PC gaming. An exception to Goldeneye for the N64. Hope that this review has given a small insight what the FPS of the 90s looked like on the PlayStation. For more videos like this, please like and subscribe, leave some comments down below, it means a lot to me, so stay safe and take care.